Back on the line. Nicola Harvey Mitchell, are you there? Good morning. Yes, I am. Are you hearing me? I am hearing you. Are you hearing me? Mr. Anthony Watkins, are you there as well? Yes, I am. All right. Fantastic. So uh, let's start. Mr. Watkins, can you, do you mind starting by just stating for me, what is the intent of the Community Recovery Committee and the desired outcomes? Okay. Yes, well, they, you know, as, as the name indicates, community recovery speaks to the fact that over the years, some of our communities have been disenfranchised. People have felt excluded from the mainstream of economic and social life in the country. And we know that some of that surfaces occasionally as unrest. So coming out of the events that took place in early July, the prime minister established the, the committee. Now, our commitment is to focus on youth in the community uh, that really, in a lot of ways, is where some of the most strident responses have come from. But really, when you think about community, we're speaking about the entirety of the, of the area. So we focus on community recovery for broad areas we can think about. One, of course, would be the notion of community pride and ownership, the extent to which people feel good about their community, its history, and what it has produced. We look at issues of human development, so whether it's education, training, and potential identification. Uh, the physical and, as you were speaking earlier, the, the mental health of the community. Uh, we look at the social support system, family, community groups, activities, mentoring and leadership in the community. And very importantly, from a real world perspective, the notion of business and economic development, employment opportunities, and to have vibrant communities, you know, economically that provide opportunities for people. So those are the, the broad areas that we will focus on. And uh, it really is why we're speaking initially to the East Port of Spain, Laventil, Mova cluster. Mm -hmm. Our mandate really over the next year or, or two would be to extend to other communities where there are issues for some of our semi-urban mm -hmm. youth population. All right. So it seems that so far you guys have been doing lots of the consultation phase and the, the I guess, the thinking phase, as you want to call it. I'm, I'm not, I didn't hear you clearly. I was asking if so far what, what the committee has done is more related to the, the consultation phase and the thinking through and the research and development phase. Yes? Yes. Well, what, what we have done, what we have done is, of course, to look at what is. We're not going to get imprisoned by things that have happened in the past. So while we will glance at some of those things, we have taken a very deep and searching look at what has been happening in the communities. Okay. And there's a wide range of programs and services that have been offered. So we're looking at those, and we are also contacting stakeholders. Along with that, what we've done, of course, is to begin the process of community outreach. Right. One would understand that in a, a COVID era, that cannot take place in as expansive and face-to-face -face a, a model as, as, as we would like. But Nicola Harvey has been our lead in terms of going out into the community and meeting with groups and she can speak, you know, much more about that. Well, fantastic. I was just about to bring in Nicola into the conversation. Nicola, <laughs> tell me about your experience so far um, going out to the community. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so being a community resident myself, because I have lived in Laventil for more than 30-something years of my life, and worked in Laventil, um, gave me an opportunity to go into the various communities. When you so think about Laventil or East Port, when you're thinking about one community, actually, they have, I mean, we have divided it into about 53 communities that we have to go out to each street, each little village is like a community with its own unique characteristics. And so far we have gone into Beverly Hills, John John, we've gone into Nelson Street, Duncan Street, Mangaroos. This week we are targeting Mova, that's Navadati Mova, Caledonia. We're also going, today actually we're doing Port of Spain South, and on Saturday we're going into Beetham Sea Lots. So every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays, we are going out to the communities as much as we can because of you know the COVID restrictions. We are keeping the numbers under 10 or so residents plus ourselves. If we can't get everybody, then we do some via Zoom so that we can reach. And when we are targeting those various communities, we are saying we are reaching different age groups, different gender, different persons with different backgrounds so we can really get and feel and get to know them. This is our first year community engagement, and this is going to continue as we continue to evaluate, as we continue to anal analyze and develop the particular interventions, which we are not directly delivering, right. but we are going to collaborate with other institutions to help deliver the programs, whether it be direct or indirect programs for the community of the East Port of Spain area.
Nicola, tell me, what do the people want? What have they been saying that they actually want from, from this recovery committee or, or what they want in general going forward? Can you repeat that, please? I was asking, what have the people been saying that they want going forward? What do they actually want? Got you. All right, so number one on the, on, on the list would be employment and employment more so for young people. And it's not just the short-term employment, but sustainable employment so that they can take care of their families. People really want the level of independence. They want to sustain their lives. They want good lives like anybody else within Trinidad and Tobago. So that was one of the number one priorities. Right. The other thing would have been education and quality education for the young people. They are concerned that the education levels at the East Border State schools are not as high as they would like them to be so that they can really recover, so that they can really take advantage of the opportunities out there. Persons talk about opportunities from an infrastructure development perspective. They want to see their place looking good, right. like any of us. We want the garbage picked up. We want the roads fixed. We want to see our buildings. We want to see, um, they wanted to see like the basketball courts, you know, lit, lit you know, have the electricity or the, the community offices that they have well done, you know, and so that the infrastructure is important to them. They also want to see their MPs and they want to see their councillors. And I think it's an understanding of local government and how they can influence local government to meet their particular needs. So I think there is some opportunities for us to go into understanding how you can lobby, how you can advocate for the things that you require within your community. Um, they, I think they focused also on families and single parent. In one particular area, I think one of the young guys said, we all we really want you to help the families, the single parents out there, you know, the single mothers who are out there. So I think a, 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 a field also is strengthening the family. And those are some of the top issues that came out of our initial engagement. All right. Well, that's fantastic. Mr. Watkins, before we wrap up, can you tell me what is RE-TT? What is, sorry? RE-TT. Re, all right. <laughs> okay. We, 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 have, we have decided to, to, to frame our intervention around a, a few re's coming out of recover. Ah. So actually, we speak to reimagine, mm -hmm. reinvest, and recover. And reimagine really speaks to how do we engage our people in the communities to begin to reimagine what the communities can be, to have a desired future for what the community is and how that looks and feels. Reinvest, of course, speaks to people reinvesting in themselves, in their families, in the community, in the groups in the community, in government reinvesting in the communities, in stakeholders and corporate sponsors. But we're also looking very specifically at people who were born and grew up in these communities who may have moved away to reinvest in those communities that gave them life and, and, and nurture them up. And of course, those we see as moving towards the final re, which is recover. Nice. Really creating some, some new energy and life around our communities so that people can be proud of and, and be, be comfortable and, and energized by living in those communities and bringing what they can to the national landscape. And right. okay, so I want to just add to something that Mr. Watkins said, if that's okay. One of the key things also coming out of the re is our ability to tell the stories, the success stories of people. And that helps with the recovery, the reimagine, and the reinvesting. So I know Hans and the, our communication sub team is working on telling some of those stories. Nice. And I know you all have a program of telling some of the success stories also of Laventil and the East Border Spain area. Yeah, we call it Heroes of the Community, and we look forward to sharing it again with you guys. So tell me, before you guys go, how can one get in contact with the committee? Okay, so the, the committee, we, our email address would be connect at communityrecovery.gov.tt. Let me repeat that. Connect at communityrecovery.gov.tt. And we, we do have, we have established our website and our Facebook pages and so on already so those are going to be coming out into social media in a bit and of course you will see them they'll be in your face all right thank you very much uh anthony watkins chairman of the community recovery committee as well as nicola harvey mitchell committee member of the community recovery committee as we continue to explore you know the recovery community recovery program and you know it's great to hear that they you know the aspect of celebrating the heroes that's right as we've been doing you know yeah, the heroes, over, heroes in the community yeah months now like, months now know, since yeah since i came on the show yeah. <laughs> it's been around <laughs> and right, um and, and 
always highlighting the positives that are coming from the various communities, especially those communities which are at sometimes potential. considered, yes, the at potential, at potential communities. communities. I, I love I love that that term that was coined right here on the Now Morning Show because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know uh, by by Nicola by by Nicola herself that yeah. you were just chatting with because again people look at these communities in our communities in in, in ways that that are shed in, in negative light and you know what there's a lot of light bright light that comes from those communities. I think we tend to focus on your negative and we don't realize how much actual positive they actually. That's is. right. You know what? Let's take a quick break and when we come back, we have so much more for you guys still on the Now Morning Show. Believe it or not, we still have more. <laughs> <laughs>